This is CBC Here and Now. I'm sure that they're making their strategic calculations. Another by-election down, the general election to go. But when will the next provincial election be called? Spring or the fall? Good evening and welcome to Here and Now. I'm Anthony Germain. And I'm Carolyn Stokes. A police officer has been charged for allegedly mixing business with family. Sergeant Brent James Hillier now faces two criminal charges after a lengthy investigation into his actions at the scene of a crash that happened last summer. We bring in Ryan Cook now, who was the first to report on this story. So Ryan, what happened that day and what charges is this officer now facing? Well, Sergeant Hillier is now facing one charge of obstructing justice and one charge of breaching public trust. Now this goes back to an incident on June 1st where Hillier was the first responding officer to a car crash in Upper Island Cove. This is what that crash looked like. A car had smashed into a house. The driver was believed to be impaired. But with the charges late today, the RCMP is now alleging Hillier let the driver go. And we know it was his son, Brent James Hillier Jr. The RCMP Major Crimes Division took over the investigation and eventually charged Hillier Jr. with dangerous driving. The RNC in St. John's was told to investigate Hillier Sr., resulting in today's charges. All right, Ryan, um, you were the first, as I mentioned, to actually get this. How did you get this story back in June? Well, it came to us in a Facebook, a Facebook inbox message sorry, uh, from a person who requested to remain anonymous. And at first it seemed like small town rumors, but once we started looking into it, it was pretty clear very quickly that something had happened here and some of the information just wasn't really adding up. Uh, the RCMP told us that Hillier had immediately handed off the investigation to another officer, but we went to Upper Island Cove and we found the homeowner. He told us that Hillier Sr. was in his driveway when he came home that day, but Hillier Jr. and the car were nowhere to be found. Uh, he told us that Hillier Sr. wanted uh, to deal with him directly, but he said that he demanded to speak with another officer. Now, do you know, Ryan, if this had any impact on, on the police investigation? Well, it's, it's hard to say because the RCMP have been, have been handling the media very carefully on this one, but we do know this. They've repeatedly referred to this as a suspected impaired driving crash, but the driver was not at the scene, uh, did, did not remain at the scene, sorry. And we know that about a month passed by before they charged Hillier Jr. And that was with dangerous driving and operating a motor vehicle without insurance. No charges of impaired driving. Anthony. Thanks, Ryan. That's here and now's Ryan Cook reporting from our newsroom. Well, are we headed towards a spring election? The premier isn't ruling it out and PC leader Chess Crosby says bring it on. What I'm saying right now is we're planning for a fall election, but right now it's uh, a lot of this will, be, will depend on what the federal government decides and when they select your election date. Uh, but we will be letting the people of the province, and I'm looking for a good campaign. Ultimately, it's his call. If he thinks that we're unprepared and he wants to call an early election, then it may just mean I'll be Premier in May. Well, last night's by-election in Topsail Paradise raises questions about a general election, and that by-election was likely the last one before the province sends all of us to the polls. The Tories, well, they won last night big time. <laughs> PC candidate Paul Din jumped to an early lead, and it never slipped away, sailing to victory over Liberal candidate Patricia Hines-Coates, who came second, and NDP candidate Kathleen Burt, who was a very distant third. While voter turnout was only about 36%, Din earned most of those votes. Now, it is historically a blue district. Former Tory Premier Paul Davis was in that seat before stepping down in the fall. Hey. 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 We got a road ahead of us. We're going to change the way things are done. We're going to be more open and accountable, and we're going to make this province the place it should be. I was confident going door to door that there's a groundswell of support for the PCs. Paul was a great candidate and a lot of responsiveness to me. So uh, there's talk about a spring election. I say bring it on. What do you, you don't, but anyway, I do. <laughs> These are typical Tory districts in place. Uh, so right now we're going to put in some, a strong candidate who's willing to work in the district, get better known, show the people in Topsville Paradise what she can able to do for them. We ran a clean campaign, we worked hard, 
I think when I knock on some more doors, next time I'll win the election. Well, you know what? We just All parties now have gone door to door in this uh, district, and all parties, I'm sure, have heard the same things I've heard. So we should be all ready to address some of these concerns. I met up with the newest member of the PC caucus earlier this afternoon in the district and my interview with Paul Din. You can see that in 30 minutes. A new way to affirm in the provincial court system. Our Indigenous people have high respect for the eagle feather. We need to change our Indigenous peoples across this country don't feel that they are a part of this system. I'll tell you about 11 eagle feathers that are on their way to courtrooms across this province. Well, some big money announced today to help fight climate change in this province. And one of the first beneficiaries, low-income families who want to make their homes more energy efficient. Federal and provincial politicians gathered in St. John's today to announce nearly $90 million in joint funding over the next four years. The first action includes an expansion of the Home Energy Savings Program. First launched in 2017, it provides grants of up to $5,000 for families to insulate and seal their homes and upgrade heating systems. And the program is no longer exclusive to homes heated by electricity. Those heated by oil, wood and propane are also eligible. This is in response once again and another concrete example that we are listening. This is something that we have heard loud and clear uh, from the public that they would like to have. We made a commitment and we're taking action. Fighting climate change by investing in efficiency adds up and it pays off. It will create good middle class jobs, supporting Newfoundland and Labrador businesses, families and our economy. I know many seniors, I know many middle income families within our province today that they are, are, they are concerned about what the rising costs of energy in the future. But this is another way that we spend their taxpayers money wisely. And the Housing Corporation hopes to provide grants to more than 800 families this year, resulting in energy savings of about 25%. Millions will also be spent to convert more public buildings to electric heat. So far, nearly $9 million of the funding has been earmarked, with more programs to follow. Well, a collective groan likely came out of Happy Valley Goose Bay this morning as people woke up to even more snow. And it's really piling up. There's more snow down now than this time last year. And the mayor said town crews are doing their best to keep roads clear, but mechanical issues are getting in the way. A grader and a loader are both broken, and the weather just won't quit. We usually uh, plow the roads, and then we, 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 uh, we widen them out, and we scrape them. And our staff hasn't had the time, because by the time they plow the roads and get them cleaned up, there's another storm coming, and as we speak, uh, there's another snowstorm uh, issued for Monday. And you can see all that snow, but just in case you couldn't tell, here's another one. Uh, there is no more room to put the snow anywhere in Happy Valley Goose Bay, as Raymond said. Uh, taking a look at some of the totals, though, right now, just to put some things into perspective. So 100 centimeters of snow has fallen just this week, and that brings the total up to 199 centimeters of snow on the ground. The normal at the end of January, which we still have one more week, is normally 71 centimeters, and that brings a total of snow since the beginning of the season at 367 centimeters of snow. That normal should be sitting around 224. Now, the weekend looks nice as far as uh, weather goes, but there is another storm, as he just mentioned, on the way for Monday. I'll have all the details on your weekend forecast when I come back. Carolyn? Thanks, Ashley. To some national news now, the RCMP provided more information about yesterday's raids in Kingston, Ontario. Police are confirming they were part of terror investigations. As David Cochran reports, one of the two people arrested has not been charged. This street, this house, the focus of a national counterterrorism operation. We did receive credible FBI information regarding a, a, an attack plot. Uh, with no specific time, date, or location affixed to it. That tip launched a multi-agency investigation involving 300 people. The immediate result, an unnamed minor arrested and charged with plotting to build a bomb and detonate it in a public place. The individual was uh, reported 
to be involved in the manufacturing of homemade improvised explosive devices, and that was one of the subjects of our investigation. Police raided the home of the minor on Thursday afternoon. I mean, it's always surprising to come home from school and then seeing a whole bunch of cars and vans and police everywhere. At the same time, they raided this house a few kilometers away, the home of a Syrian refugee family. They arrested but have not charged 20-year-old Hussam Adin al-Zahabi. His family would not talk on camera today, but Amin al-Zahabi told CBC by phone his oldest son was arrested. I know my son. <laughs> he didn't. He did not think about that. He liked Canada. He liked the, the safety in Canada. How could he think about that? At no time was the city of Kingston or any Canadian area under direct threat. The police focused heavily on reassuring people they were safe, despite simultaneous counter-terrorism raids in residential neighborhoods. The specifics of how this alleged plot was working and what the motive might be were left for another day, as the police say they won't discuss the specifics of the investigation. David Cochran, CBC News, Kingston. Former Donald Trump campaign advisor Roger Stone is defiant today after being arrested during an early morning FBI raid at his home. It's all part of Robert Mueller's investigation into the Trump campaign's ties to Russia. Stone is charged with witness tampering, obstruction and lying to Congress. And he's the sixth Trump associate to be charged in the special counsel's Russia investigation. And he's now out on a $250,000 bond. The 66-year-old says he will not plead guilty. And after 35 days under a partially shut down government, the longest in U.S. history, there appears to be a compromise. Congressional leaders and U.S. President Donald Trump have reached a short term deal to reopen the government. Trump announced the deal from the White House. We have reached a deal to end the shutdown and reopen the federal government. As everyone knows, I have a very powerful alternative but I didn't want to use it at this time. And that alternative would be to declare a national emergency to build that long promised wall at the U.S.-Mexico border. That will be subject to ongoing negotiations. They will continue under this new deal, which will reopen the government for three weeks. A man tied himself to the gate in front of a mine access road near Salmonier Nature Park this morning to protest a possible gold mine in the area. Eagle Ridge International Limited wants to explore the area and could eventually set up a gold mine. In the meantime, the company has built an access road and Mike Koo says he's not happy with the way the project's unfolding. He says he wants the, to protect the Avalon Wilderness Area and Salmonier Nature Park. Police arrived to remove Koo's later in the morning and he was not charged with anything. Well, a harsh new reality has arrived for hundreds of Rona employees on the Avalon who were told in November their stores were closing. The last day on the job was yesterday, and today their union hosted a job fair in an effort to offer some hope to the workers. About 260 Rona workers in six locations are now without work. In some cases, both breadwinners work for the company and rely on Rona for their income. In another, an entire family, including children, worked for the company. The workers' union, Carpenters Local 579, organized the job fair at the Union College in Paradise so laid-off members could talk with potential employers about opportunities. Judy McDonald worked in the paint department at the Rona on Topsail Road for 24 years. She says she was shocked to lose her job. She says the last day at work yesterday wasn't easy. It's really sad. Everybody was, you know, like really sad. Yeah, everybody was uh, crying and, you know, yeah. I can only Because a lot of people need jobs. We all need a job. Yep. It's tough, isn't it? Yep, it is very tough. Yep. There's a new way to take the oath in this province's provincial court. Witnesses, victims, and offenders can now swear on either the Bible or an eagle feather. The feather symbolizes great honor and respect in the Mi'kmaq culture. Here and now's Colleen Connors takes us to the official ceremony where the feather was introduced. A very special day in this courtroom in Stephenville, where members of the Halibu Mi'kmaq First Nation Band celebrated part of their culture intertwining with the court system. 
These feathers will go to a court stand in the province as a new way to take an affirmation. Odell Pike came up with the idea. Most of our Indigenous people have high respect for the eagle feather and to have a symbol in the courtroom, you know, that's part of their culture is very important. Pike says eagle feathers are a sign of strength and honor. Uh, when you hold it, even if you tried to hold it, it's, it's just such a beautiful feeling and, you know, most of our uh, Indigenous people have uh, such a respect for it that it's very seldom they would, you know, be dishonest or not tell the truth because they know the significance of it. Pike saw the eagle feathers in other court systems in the country, brought the idea to the Justice Department, who then made this bestowment ceremony possible. You know, right now, we need to change. Our Indigenous peoples across this country don't feel that they are a part of this system and that we need to change for the better, and I think today shows we're willing to move that way. Anyone can use the eagle feather to affirm on the court stand. The feathers will be distributed to 10 courtrooms and one circuit court in Labrador and used immediately. Now, Judge Lynn Cole, who oversees all the proceedings in this Stephenville courtroom, told me that some people have already asked to use an eagle feather in this courtroom or have even brought their own. She says she will leave the new feather on display so people can use it at any time. Colleen Connors, CBC News, Stephenville. Whereas years ago, big concerts weren't offered in many venues, especially in Newfoundland, but now you have concerts that are more economical. You can hop on a plane and see huge concerts. Grand Falls, Windsor looks to its residents to find ways to save the annual Salmon Fest since it keeps losing money. And we have some of their suggestions from last night's public meeting. The soldiers heard a noise and they thought it was a chicken and there was a newborn baby. Abandoned as a baby, rescued by three Canadian soldiers. After decades of mystery, a British woman is filling in the blanks.
This weather forecast is brought to you by Newfoundland and Labrador Tourism. 5,000 kilometers of groomed trails are waiting to be explored. Embrace winter today. Okay, just before we get to the weather, Ashley, there's another uh, big star other than you who's getting used to life here <laughs> in this province, and that's uh, Glenn Big Baby Davis. He's had stints with the Boston Celtics and, of course, a whole bunch of other NBA teams. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's now suiting up with the St. John's Edge, and according to Instagram, he's picking up on some local slang. I've been in Newfoundland for a minute, and I've been learning, like, all, like, the slang. So it's like, yes, bye. Yes, bye. Yes, bye. So it's like, you know, yes, bye can be say no. Yes, bye can mean yes. Yes, bye can be uh, really. I can't believe you. Like, yes, bye can be like, uh, oh, I don't believe you. Um, <laughs> that's, that's a pretty I'm good explanation. Yeah, my, 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 well. my, new, my new slang. So if you hear me saying yes, bye, you know I'm a new philander. <laughs> you feel me? <laughs> oh boy. Oh. He's actually that's a pretty good explanation for people unfamiliar with yes bye. It actually yeah, he, he does yeah. it pretty well. <laughs> <laughs> This guy is uh, a huge draw, right? Oh, and, yeah. Uh, you can tell he's a character, right? Originally from Louisiana, fan favorite. And mm -hmm. uh, he, the, the edge certainly packs him in. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because you too. <laughs> <laughs> so good. So what do you think of that? How's your yes by? I don't know. I'm working on it. <laughs> <laughs> he's nailed it, though. I don't think I've, I'm not there yet. Not there yet. Uh, but talk about the temperatures today, especially it was warm here. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, for the out or for most of Newfoundland today, it was yeah. absolutely beautiful. Uh, the sun eventually came out, which was really nice. Yes. So, yeah. If we take a look at some of the temperatures between seven and ten degrees up uh, through the northern portions, a little bit cooler, six degrees in St. Anthony, and then Happy Valley Goose Bay reached a high near minus four. Now yesterday I was saying potentially reaching uh, about uh, between three and five degrees. And the track of the low went a little bit further south, so that meant you got stuck in that colder air. So that's why those temperatures didn't climb today. Otherwise, uh, quite a nice day in Labrador City at minus 11. Now these temperatures have dropped, and they actually dropped earlier this morning for the west coast. And uh, we're starting to see those temperatures dive down as well for most of the island and then up through Labrador, still uh, quite mild, actually minus four in Happy Valley Goose Bay. So still sitting at the same temperature and minus one for Cartwright. So if we take a look at that current satellite and radar, not a whole lot happening anymore because we're starting to see skies clear out. Same thing up through Labrador. The snow that's happening along the coast will eventually ease as we head or rather uh, pull off as we head through the night tonight. But uh, the winds are still quite strong. So we're seeing uh, sustained winds between 40 and 60 kilometers per hour up and along coastal Labrador down through the northern peninsula. And then with those gusts, we're still seeing gusts between 70 and 90 kilometers per hour. Now, Environment Canada does still have a wind warning in place. We're looking at gusts actually picking up for Nain overnight with gusts between 100 and 110 kilometers per hour. And then uh, these wind warnings will likely end for um, Southeast Labrador and the Northern Peninsula as we head through the night tonight. So taking a look at your uh, forecast through the overnight, those temperatures are going to continue to drop. So uh, especially for the Avalon and parts of Central where those temperatures are still sitting above zero, things might get a little bit slick tonight. So make sure you put some salt out. Uh, minus three for Port of Basque. Uh, southwest winds though, 30 gusting 50. So it's going to stay quite breezy through the overnight. Uh, otherwise, just looking at that potential for flurries. Now, Buren Peninsula, uh, most of eastern Newfoundland and the Avalon could see either flurries or some freezing drizzle through the night tonight. Otherwise, those temperatures are going to dip for most of Labrador down to the minus teens. Nain, again, going to stay windy with that uh, potential for some blowing snow through the night tonight. But eventually, those uh, snow that snow will ease, but still looking at another two to four centimeters through the night tonight. Night. Now, taking a look at the future tracker, there's not a whole lot on it, which is good news for your Saturday. Looking at uh, maybe that potential for some cloudy periods and a few flurries along the west coast. Otherwise, uh, Labrador looking nice. Lab West might see a few flurries in the mix as well, but overall, not a bad day 
at all. So here's a look at the forecast. Temperatures in the minus single digits hovering around the zero degree mark for the Buren Peninsula and the Avalon. Those winds will eventually ease, so it does look like a nice day, but again, can't rule out that chance of a few flurries along the west coast. For Lab City, dipping down though, minus 25 as your afternoon high tomorrow, and then temperatures eventually uh, going to drop for Nain down to minus 22 with a slight chance of a few flurries. So let's look at your forecast. We'll look ahead to Sunday. Looks pretty good. I'll have all those details coming up. Well, the Exploits Valley Salmon Festival has gone full circle. What started in 1985 as a big local festival in Grand Falls, Windsor morphed into a mega concert. But then it started losing money. So over the last few years, the festivals scaled back smaller events at a smaller cost. And now the town is debating the future of the Salmon Festival, a topic of last night's public meeting. I think and seem to be the consensus here tonight that it was more about smaller smaller groups in different venues as opposed to maybe just one group in one big venue. And I don't think that it's any person's groups, uh, anything that they did wrong. I think it's more about the economy and things are changing and things are opening up. Whereas years ago, big concerts weren't offered in many venues, especially in Newfoundland. But now you have concerts that are more economical. You can hop on a plane and see huge concerts. Me personally, I haven't attended in a couple years, but that's just my my personal preference of music. Now, in saying that, um, I mentioned earlier, if the ticket is thirty or forty dollars, I don't care who's playing. I'm going to go down. I'm going to enjoy myself. I'm going to take my wife. We're going to have a group of friends go with us. And we need to be the first here for the first ever High Street Festival that is going to showcase cannabis culture. Newfoundland is the first for a lot of things. Uh, first place colonized in North America. We have our own time zone, our own dictionary. And um, we, in, the, in lieu of the fact that marijuana was just legalized here in Canada, I think we should be also the first ones to celebrate it. We've got George Street Festival, Strawberry Festival, you know what I mean? And, uh, the list goes on and on and on of all these festivals that all come on board. So people now don't have to drive this long distance to see a festival of any such now because they're basically in their, in, in their backyard. Well, the sun's come out here in Topsail Paradise, the district that was won by this man, Paul Din, for the Conservatives last night. We'll have a chat with him coming up.
Well, welcome back to Here and Now in Paradise Now with the MHA who won the by-election here last night. Uh, Paul Din, congratulations. Oh, thank you so much. So why do you think you managed to win, not just win, but win really handedly? Well, you know what? I, I think my reputation here in, in the Paradise Topsail area, uh, you know, people know me and I think they know I speak up. They know I, I like to uh, push for openness and transparency and they know they'll get an answer from me one way or the other, whether they agree or disagree. So I think, uh, you know, that's the personal part of it. But of course, uh, on the uh, provincial side, you have, uh, you know, people are, you hear it at the doors, people are upset with uh, the uh, abundance of taxes on us and, uh, you know, uh, they're concerned about energy rates going down the road. Right. And of course, the openness and honesty is, is another thing in the House that they'd like to see more of. I guess one thing sort of following the results last night online was the voter turnout, as you know, not the greatest, 35%. It is January. Uh, on the other hand, I wonder if you think, maybe people are thinking, you know, I'm going to have to vote again. Why bother voting now? I think there's, that's a lot of it. You're coming right off the tail end of Christmas, you know, and the first week or so, people didn't even know there was a by-election, right, let alone think about vo voting for it. So, so that's a bit of it. In the, in the middle of winter, you know, we did have a couple of heavy snowfalls in the middle of this election, so, so that's part of it. Um, you know, we probably didn't get our identified vote out as much as we we uh, thought we were going to get out, but certainly did well enough to win. And uh, you know, I think for 35 percent this time of year, given the circumstance, I don't I don't think it was too bad. I, I think Premier Dwight Ball has almost signaled that their campaign is going to be blame the Tories for Muskrat Falls, blame the Tories for Muskrat Falls, blame the Tories for Muskrat Falls. Did you get any of that at the door? Yeah, that's interesting. Most of the stuff I got early were like uh, the 1.6 and the cabin fees and so on. 1.6 being the, the distance to go to school. The busing, yeah. busing uh, rule. But their latter, latter week or so, uh, the taxation and Muskrat Falls came up. But Muskrat Falls came up more about, you know, what are we going to do about the energy costs down the road? Uh, a couple of people said to me, they said, we don't, we're sick of the blame game, you know? And they said, you know, some, some weren't even impressed with the inquiry. They said there's money that could be spent somewhere else, you know, like the 1.6 busing. But, uh, no, I think people really at the door, yeah, they, they understand we got muskrat balls, we have it, we're stuck with it. How are we going to deal with it? And how are we going to make uh, sure that the, the uh, residents don't burden the bill, right? All right, no doubt, once we get in the general campaign, whether that's in the spring or in the fall, Muskrat Falls and how to pay for electricity rates going to be a big issue. One last question for you, though, as uh, as we move forward, I wonder: Is part of you a little depressed that you're going to, you're going to have to go through this again, maybe in a couple of months, maybe in the fall? And that the, and campaigns are exhausting. I mean, yes, they are exhausting. And I mentioned to you at onset, and I'm not going to get into it. I mean, I, I wasn't well during the during the election, so I'm looking forward to an opportunity when I can be full gusto at it and I certainly enjoy getting out and talking to the people and you know uh, from a point of view for me uh, we we've established our identified voters and you know we're, we're ready to go. All right, it's we're like a practice, go. a practice round. Practice round. This is round one. <laughs> <laughs> All right Mr. Din congratulations again and thanks for your time. I really appreciate it. Thank right. you so much. Well, a British woman has launched a remarkable search. Abandoned as a baby in 1941, she was rescued by three Canadian soldiers training in England. For most of her life, that's all she knew, but now she's filling in the blanks. Thomas Degla has that story. Court cases, abandoned child, all the several. These binders tell the story of Mary Crabb's life. That's the photo that I've got. She's still learning about it herself. And that's the one that was sent to my mum that adopted me when I was five months this old. This is you. That's me. Wow. Already, that baby had suffered and survived. This is my birth certificate. Born the 23rd of September, 1941, with the place of birth listed unusually yeah. as Horsell Common. That's a huge park near London, rugged and bushy. The baby was abandoned here, out of sight, by her mother. Then, guess who found her? The soldiers heard a noise, and they thought it was a chicken. And there was a newborn baby with nothing on, and they cut the cord and wrapped me in a white shirt, clean shirt. Not just any soldiers, but three members of the Royal Canadian Artillery, among those stationed in England during the Second World War. Tears were running down my face to think that that was me. Crab's nephew only recently discovered this photo, revealing the men in uniform she never got to thank. I'd never be able to thank them enough, would I? I owe my life to them.
While Crabbe spent her life in suburban Hertfordshire, little did she know an ocean away in snowy Canada, her story was resonating deeply. Holy crap. <laughs> Pretty powerful. Little did Crabbe know that one soldier's family was keeping a book of their own, complete with that now familiar picture featuring Sergeant Ernie Curtis in the middle. His diary entry from that day simply marked, found a newborn baby. He just said that, that he and two of his buddies had found a, a baby in a, in a field or meadow, but he just wished that she was well and he searched for her. Back then, the story made headlines in both Britain and Canada, with the soldiers calling her the daughter of the regiment, apparently naming her Virginia Regina Brandon after their hometowns. Turns out she'd been given the name Mary, adopted by a loving family, who never mentioned her birth mother had pleaded guilty to abandonment. These two strangers share a long lost connection. Hello. And this Hello. is the first time they speak. Oh, I don't know what to say no. now. If you're like me right now, you I got lots of thoughts running through your head. Yes, yeah. I have, I have, and I'm trying to hold back, you know, but it's, it's hard. One thing she it's did hard. say is thank you. I can tell you that dad looked for you for numerous years. Oh, well, it's a miracle really, isn't it? It truly is. It is. It is. Now Harry Curtis plans to send Crabbe his late father's epaulets as a memory of that encounter 77 years ago. I had dad. He never had a, a physical connection to, to him. So this will give her one. So I'd be two weeks old. She also just connected with the family of gunner Bob Griffin on the left. The other man remains a mystery. You know, I suppose even now there's so much you don't know. Oh yeah, it's a load I don't know. A load. Her own story is still being uncovered. And what a story it is. Thomas Dagg, CBC News, Hertfordshire, England. What a great mystery, wow. right? Emotional story. Yeah, no, a wonderful story by Thomas. And uh, who knows, maybe, because I know many here and nows across the country be airing that as well. Sometimes, you know, people see things and say, hey, yeah. wait a second, I know that story. Yeah, that guy yeah. looks familiar. Yeah, yeah, you never know.
14 years ago, I had a brain aneurysm, and within a week, I had a stroke. We're checking back in with people who have overcome some major life challenges. At the age of 36, I had to get better. This is my story, a new series with segments every two weeks on Here and Now. This is my story. Debbie Maloney, coming up on January 30th. Welcome back to Here and Now. Well, choral singing is particularly popular in this province, but newfound sound is a little different. Mm -hmm. It's a women's chorus, and they specialize in the harmonies of the barbershop style of singing, and they're going to be on Weekend AM on CBC Radio 1 this weekend. She, she was a river of song. She, she was the red of the dawn. She, she was the glow in the evening sky. She, she was the green in the meadow. She, she was a ray of the rainbow. She, she was a dance in the northern light. So let us sing, sing. Lift up our voices, sing, sing, as she inspired us, sing, sing her a river of song. Let us sing, sing, lift up our voices, sing, sing, as she inspired us, sing, sing her a river of song. Born near a church in the wild formed by the lessons of childhood she let the stars be her guide a hand for traditional craft skills she learned back in the past she lived her life with northern pride so let us sing sing lift up our voices sing as she inspired us, sing, sing her a river of song. Let us sing, sing, lift up our voices, sing, sing. As she inspired us, sing, sing her a river of song, of song. Now you can hear the women's chorus and from the group's president this weekend on Weekend AM on CBC Radio 1. And if you're over the age of 14 and in the St. John's area, uh, the group is offering a free singing lesson for women looking to give it a go. It's on Saturday, February 16th. Hey, not a bad night out there. Temperatures are going to continue to drop, which means it might get a little slick out there. Now the weekend looks pretty good. I'll have your forecast for Sunday and looking ahead coming up. I think someone's breaking into my car. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, okay. No. Oh no. You can actually see the grass there. Okay, I'm good.
One Fortune Bay fishing couple's crusade against green crab. We have a very, very big problem. Sunday at noon and Monday at 7. This weather update is brought to you by Beltone, helping the world hear better. It's Friday. It is. Mm -hmm. Weekends here. I'm wondering how things are shaping up. I wish that it would just stay like it was today. It's like those nice balmy temperatures around 10 degrees, but no. Yeah. It's not going to happen, right? I'm sure not a lot of people are happy about that. Yeah. I'm but, probably the only one. Yeah, I think so. But, uh, <laughs> well, it, it does look actually very nice for Sunday. Not a whole lot happening. Just a mix of sun and cloud across the province for the most part. Uh, taking a look at the future tracker, we can see a little bit of cloud cover potentially moving in on Sunday along the west coast. That's the best chance of seeing the flurries or light snow. And then potentially up along the straits as well uh, into the afternoon and evening hours. Otherwise, there's not a whole lot on this map uh, heading through the day on Sunday. Later on in the evening, though, towards the early morning hours, that's when the next system moves in. So it does look like some more snow is on the way for Labrador. And then it's a little bit messy for uh, the rest of the island. We'll get into that in just a little bit. But here's your Sunday forecast. Temperatures dipping again, minus 22 for Lab City, but plenty of sunshine. Now it's going to stay windy up through uh, northern Labrador. So Nain, minus 21, that wind chill. Definitely going to be a factor uh, into the afternoon. We're just looking at that potential for some uh, flurries, but otherwise a mix of sun and cloud along the west coast. Temperature near minus six for Corner Brook. Same for central down along the south coast. We're looking at temperatures closer to the mid minus single digits. So minus three for Marystown, minus four for St. John's and then Cartwright sitting at about minus 17 through the afternoon. So taking a look at the future tracker for Sunday overnight into Monday. That's when we'll start to see that snow move in and we're going to see that for the island as well with a changeover to rain more than likely into the afternoon through potentially some freezing rain and or ice pellets through the uh, early afternoon and then into rain. But in behind it, not a whole lot happening in behind that system, maybe just some lingering cloud cover. And then those temperatures are going to dip right back down again as we get again into that northwesterly flow with some lingering uh, snow and blowing snow into Tuesday up through Labrador. So into Tuesday overnight. Again, that system will pull off maybe some cloud cover through the day on Wednesday. But once we get Monday through, not uh, anything until at least midweek, we'll start to see a potential another system move through. So here's a look at your five day forecast for St. John's and Eastern Newfoundland. There's all that sunshine, hopefully for Saturday and Sunday temperatures. Saturday uh, night, nice, Sunday dipping down a little bit, but then a return of that milder air at four degrees for Monday. Again, we'll see that snow transition through to freezing rain uh, and rain into the afternoon hours on Monday and reaching a high near four degrees. Tuesday, sunshine minus three and then Wednesday, maybe the chance of a few showers. For central Newfoundland, temperatures sitting between minus one and minus six. Again, those windy conditions on Monday. And then for Western Newfoundland, same thing. We'll see those winds pick up on Monday. Otherwise, just that chance of lingering flurries along the West Coast up through Eastern Labrador. Snow and windy by the time Monday rolls around, but the weekend looks nice. A little bit breezy, though, for both Saturday and Sunday. And then we're going to see that for Western Labrador as well with sunshine through Sunday. So that's a look at your extended forecast. I'll have your weather photo when I come back. Anthony. Well, it's Friday, which means you're going to want to stick around. Yes, uh, some special birthdays and anniversaries to tell you about, including a big birthday for this lovely lady. I have never seen anybody that I've been interested in, not the least bit interested in getting married or anything else. <laughs> when he asked me to wait for him, I'm still waiting. If you make a promise, you keep it. Yes, that's Annette Vardy, the woman everyone calls neat, and she's talking about the wartime promise she made to her fiancé to wait for him. And if that story sounds familiar, Carolyn spoke to Miss Vardy a year and a half ago when she was just 99. <laughs> now she's lighting up the candles again for another big birthday. We'll mark hers along with many other special birthdays and anniversaries after the break. Well, here's your weather photo of the day. There's a little bit of a hint in the Whoa. snow, if you can see it, of where it's taken. 
So are those letters? Or is that a clue? It's a letter. Those are letters, yeah. Okay. Oh, what is it? So LB? the aliens left us a clue. <laughs> <laughs> is it LBI? I thought That's I would what it looks give you like to me. Yeah, I thought LBG. I'd give you a little bit of a hint. No, it's LBI, yep. Yeah. LBI. Ah. And Ooh, it is. the mystery. Oh. Little Bay Islands. Yes, yes, good job. I think that was the easiest weather photo yet. I think that was a team effort, <laughs> yeah. uh, team effort. <laughs> I'll tell you uh, who took this wonderful photo when we come back. Welcome back, and it's Friday. Mm -hmm, which means, of course, it's time to see who's celebrating. Happy 57th anniversary to Will and Shirley Temple in Sunnyside. And congratulations to Judy and Irvin Francis in Harbor Lacou. They're celebrating 50 years of marriage, and Judy has a birthday at the end of the month. Happy anniversary to Ernie and Ann Power. They have been married for 65 years. And happy 54th anniversary to Stephen and Myrtle Gregory in Paradise. Happy anniversary, Abe and Daphne Pittman in Deer Lake. They are celebrating 66 years of marriage. Happy 99th birthday to Fern Rose of Musgrave Town, now living in St. John's. Charles Oldford of Burnside is celebrating his 96th birthday today. Happy 92nd birthday to Lewis Anderson of Stephenville, now living in Bowmanville. Bill Blake turned 92 yesterday, originally from Baytona. He now lives in St. Catharines, Ontario, but still continues to watch here and now faithfully. Thank you so much for that. Happy birthday to Greta Cave of Lewisport, who will be 92 years old tomorrow. And happy 99th birthday greetings to Alma Carter. Alma is from Cornerbrook and Greens Pond and now lives in Paradise. Happy birthday to Bridget Corcoran in Labrador City. She is 93 today. And best wishes to Florence and Tom Snow in Victoria. They are celebrating their 57th anniversary. Congratulations. And a happy 50th wedding anniversary to Dick and Agnes Hanrahan of Little Bay. They are celebrating this weekend with family and friends in Florida. Lucky them. Harold and Joy Batstone in Jackson Cove. They are celebrating their 61st wedding anniversary. Well done. Anniversary greetings going out to Harvey and Sadie Ellsworth of Carmenville. They're celebrating 62 years of marriage. Happy 56th wedding anniversary tomorrow to Max and Phyllis Beckett. And they are also celebrating in sunny Florida. 
Happy anniversary to Gerald and Edwina Andrews of Conception Bay South who are celebrating their 55th wedding anniversary. Happy birthday to Jessie Suley of Hearts Delight who celebrated her 92nd birthday on January 23rd. Happy 97th birthday this Tuesday to Gertrude Gillum of Robinsons. And happy birthday to Marion Piercy. She turned 95 on Tuesday. She's a war bride originally from Scotland, so uh, happy Robbie Burns Day as well. Now lives in paradise. And a happy 90th birthday to Morley Percy in Briggis. Dawn and Ida Warren in Chapel Arm, Trinity Bay are celebrating their 56th wedding anniversary today. And Norm and Jean Whalen in Lewisport, they are celebrating their 50th also today. And a happy 56th wedding anniversary to Arch and Shirley Butler. They celebrated on Monday. 60th wedding anniversary greetings going out to Eldridge and Mabel Dumaresque of Lance Claire. Congratulations to Kevin and Sharon Livier. They're celebrating their 50th anniversary. Anniversary greetings going out to Alistair and Linda Stone. It was their 50th anniversary yesterday. And happy birthday to Catherine Ronane of Whitless Bay, who will be celebrating her 92nd birthday tomorrow. Birthday greetings going out to Mary Lane of Catalina. She's turning 93. And birthday greetings to Viney Stanley in Clarenville, who will celebrate her 95th birthday on Sunday. Happy 57th anniversary greetings going out to Max and Alva Wellen in Ladle Cove. They celebrate tomorrow. And a very happy birthday to Annette Vardy, or Aunt Neat, as she's known to most people. She turns 101 today. She's from Clarenville and now lives in Southlands and still lives on her own and is in great health. Hope you have a wonderful birthday. Nice. Great story. Yeah. Congratulations, everybody. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, have a look at this. Canadian superstar snowboarder Sebastian Toussaint hit the slopes. Oh. Or oh, yeah. the steps. Yeah, the steps. Philadelphia's <laughs> famous museum of art this week. That's a pretty rough hit he took right there. Oh. Oh, boy. Ashley, was that your snowboard instructor? Because that's kind of like the video from White Hills <laughs> earlier. Oh, no. Okay, here's the real thing. All right, that's, that's now you may recognize these steps because they're from the movie Rocky. Ah, uh, right. Yeah. It's gonna fly now. That is that's pretty impressive. Yeah, persistence oh. pays off. My so neck that. hurts just watching that. Yeah. So yeah. keep practicing, yeah. Ashley. We can get you to do that next year. That's never gonna happen. <laughs> Maybe on my skis, <laughs> but not the snowboard. Okay, no skis. Definitely I'll not. I'll, I'll, take, I'll take the, the skis. <laughs> I'll take the skis. <laughs> get you going down the stairs between Duckworth Street and Water oh, Street, yeah, though, about a courthouse. Yeah, yeah, good idea. <laughs> Well, one thing I would do is uh, take my skates out and go skating on that pond there. You guys guessed it, Little yep. Bay Islands. Beautiful. Uh, Sweet spot. It is beautiful there. We get lots of photos from Little Bay Islands, actually. It's nice to see. Yeah. Yep, so perfect. Oh, that, I didn't change that. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly didn't hit save just there. Just testing viewers. Yeah, just testing, but yeah. that's definitely Little Bay Islands there, yeah. Nice, yeah. great picture. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so Debbie Cooper is going to be back next week. It's been great working yeah. with you, as always. Wonderful, as usual. Uh, so you're back as a reporter person yes. and all that. Excellent, yep. so we'll still see you. And mm -hmm. uh, the weekend's here. Yay! All right, so hope you have a great weekend, and uh, <laughs> we'll see you on Monday. Enjoy. Good night.